So far we have looked at several sets and usually we were specifying sets using vectors. But that need not be the case. In general, you can specify sets in terms of matrices. For instance, let us consider the set that we have already seen, the set of symmetric matrices. So this is the set of all matrices, all x in R n cross n, such that x is equal to x transpose. So this is the set of all symmetric matrices. Now if you look carefully, this is nothing but specifying a certain number of restrictions on the entries of x. So another way to write this set is that set of all x in R n cross n such that x 1 comma 2 is equal to x 2 comma 1. Likewise x 1 comma 3 is equal to x 3 comma 1 and so on. So this is another way of writing the same set. Now observe here that what is this? What, what kind of equation is this? This is basically a linear restriction on the entries of x. Essentially, you can write this as a linear transformation of the entries of x equal to 0. In fact, we have already seen this kind of restriction before. This is nothing but a hyperplane. So therefore, the set of symmetric matrices is a intersection of hyperplanes and we already have a name for this this intersection of hyperplanes is called polyhedron so this is just another way of writing the same thing so earlier when we were talking in terms of vectors we said that the equation of hyperplane is a transpose x equal to b but more generally we could say that it is of the form a comma x so inner product of a comma x equal to b so that is a more generalized definition and you can apply it to vectors to get an equation of this form alternatively you could apply it to matrices to get an equation of this form so this is a specification of a hyperplane in terms of matrices and you can in fact see that the equation x1 comma 2 equal to x2 comma 1 is exactly of this form. To see the link between these two, all you have to do is to tick A appropriately. In fact, uh, try to please try to verify that if I choose A as 0, minus 1 and then all other zeros, then 1 and all other zeros and zeros everywhere else. So then this A corresponds to the A that is required in order to express this equation x1, 2 equal to x2, 1 as inner product of A, x equal to B. So in this case, um, B is 0 and A is this. Right? So I hope I have made my point clear that this equation is a hyperplane and Sn being an intersection of hyperplanes is therefore a polyhedron. Let us look at another example of a convex set specified in terms of uh, matrices. So Sn plus is the set of all x which are symmetric and at the same time they are also positive semi-definite. So x is P as T. So this is called the set of positive semi-definite matrices. Now I claim, so what kind of set is this? So my claim is that Sn plus is actually a convex cone. So my claim is that this is actually a convex cone. So how do I prove it? Let's prove this claim. So let's say that in order to prove it's a convex cone, remember that we need to show that a convex conic combination theta1 x1 plus theta2 x2 belongs to this set. So let's assume that x1 belongs to Sn plus and likewise x2 belongs to Sn plus. 
So this implies that x1 is a symmetric matrix and what is the definition of positive semi-definiteness? If you remember, we had this definition that u transpose x1 u is greater than or equal to 0 for all u. So this is the definition of a PSD matrix. This is the definition of a PSD matrix. And likewise, for x2, we have that x2 is a symmetric matrix and u transpose x2 u is greater than or equal to 0 for all vectors u. So we have these two. Now let us consider y equal to theta1 x1 plus theta2 x2 where if you remember for cones, convex cones, we required that theta1 theta2 are both greater than or equal to 0 and there is no other restriction. So first of all is y symmetric? First of all is y symmetric? That is easy to verify. You just take y transpose. So this will be equal to theta1 times x1 transpose. Remember theta here is a scalar. So theta1 times x1 transpose plus theta2 times x2 transpose which is exactly equal to theta1 times x1 plus theta2 times x2 which is y. So y is indeed symmetric because x1 x2 are both symmetric. Then next consider the fact v transpose y v. So let us consider this quantity. This is equal to v transpose theta1 x1 plus theta2 x2 times v which can be written as theta1 times v transpose x1 v plus theta2 times v transpose x2 v. So we have two quantities here. Now we know from the positive semi-definite uh, definition of positive semi-definiteness that this quantity has to be positive or non-negative for all v and this quantity has to be non-negative for all v. So what does this imply? This implies that this whole quantity is also non-negative for all v because theta1 and theta2 are also non-negative. So in other words, we have established that v transpose yv is greater than or equal to 0 for all v which means that y is positive semi-definite and therefore in Sn plus. So therefore we have been able to show that this set of positive semi-definite matrices is actually a convex cone. So this is called, by the way, this is essentially an example of convex cones. So this is called the PSD cone, the positive semi-definite cone, which is the cone of all positive semi-definite matrices.